Hey, it's Seto Kaiba, and you're watching Anime Egotists. I don't know why these guys don't know how to duel, unless they learn from Yugi, who cheats, or maybe Joey, who's a dog. Oh, why don't you have some more jelly donuts, like Brock, and maybe you'll get better. Hmm, not. Oh, and <laughs> I play my blue eyes white dragon and kick your butts. <laughs> and welcome back to the anime egotists where i'm not really sure i trust our pets in the anime i don't know mine's kind of sitting there menacingly yeah and mine is currently walking across the table and i really hope he doesn't knock anything over dude relax anyways <laughs> my name's alex and i love my pets even when they try and disrupt me when i'm filming at least it's just while you're filming mine tried to kill me all the time yeah yeah. And I'm Richard. Yeah, he just showed up. See? See? The audience sees you. They love you, and so do I. But please, like, go play. But regardless, speaking of pets, Pokemon Journeys. We haven't always been the nicest to Pokemon Journeys, admittedly. No. It's a fine series, but it has its flaws, that's for sure. That's correct, and the Coronation series, for those of you who don't know, is something that happened in Pokemon Journeys, or that's still happening, depending on when you're watching this. Mm -hmm. Basically, a series of the quote-unquote best trainers in the world, gathering together and battling it out to see who will enter the Masters 8 and then battle Leon to, um, well, yeah. To be called the world's greatest trainer until they decide that... Oh god, what's her name from uh, Scarlet and Violet's the now the world's greatest trainer, and we don't have and you'll have to go battle her instead. Sure, something like that. And ultimately, we, we kind of like this idea, and I'll see. The idea is good, was great. The execution, not not so much. Yeah, there were. I don't know. A, a lot of what offs, and I understand they have to do that, but. They kind of promised that this series was going to be a return of a lot of extra characters, and there have been a good number of returns, but too not... many, in my opinion. It's been a lot of the same characters returning over and over again, versus them. The way they kind of, I, I feel that they promised was that it was going to be okay, this person's going to return for one or two episodes, and then this person will return for one or two episodes. It's like, no, this person's returned for two episodes here, and five episodes here, and then another two here. It's like... Yeah, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't need to see Dawn that often. She's taking my money in our poker group. I don't need to see more of her. But we decided who would be in our coronation series. We just decided maybe something a little different... And just who would be in our coronation series if we were writing journeys for some bizarre reason? Exactly. So do you want to go ahead and start us off? Let's do it. First up, Wallace. Okay, he. I actually 100% agree with this. He was on my list. <laughs> okay, I kind of feel like Wallace never really got completely got the time to shot in the anime. Like, I feel like every now and then he'd pop up, but he never really felt complete to me. Maybe we get a see maybe we get a battle of him versus Steven because they're best friends uh, dating. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It depends on whose headcanon you ask. But ultimately, I just think he's cool. I, there's something about him that I feel like is oddly hilarious, but I, I just I enjoy Wallace. Yeah, I also think this would have been a good way for especially if they'd done this kind of early on. It's uh they could have done like a Wallace Cup in uh, I forgot what the name of the city is, but it's he's doing he does his exhibition match with Steven and then goes and hosts the Wallace Cup in the same town. You could have May and Dawn return for this one, kind of get rid of one of Dawn's other character stories that are just there. Oh, I thought you were about to say get rid of one of Dawn's rivals. I was about to say, can it not be Ursula? We've talked about her. We've both grown to like <laughs> Ursula. No, 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 I'm just talking about like what. <sighs> As we've said, Dawn returned way too much, but this would have been a good chance to let Dawn shine in what Dawn's supposed to be able to do well, and we could have gotten rid of or changed one of the stories that we got our before. 
Yeah, yeah. A, a Wallace Cup. Everybody's been asking for a Wallace Cup arc. Everybody wants to see some of the best coordinators of all time and also Drew in a really good arc. But I'm not again seeing it. I think it would be cool. Yeah, and if this was done early enough, we could have also gotten uh, Chloe started down the path that five, four, three, two, one, that she's going to be continuing in the final parts of this series. Uh, you say continuing. No, it, from what I can tell, it just leads to, it leads to basically nothing. Oh, joy. I didn't know that part, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but ultimately, Wallace, I always thought he was kind of quirky. I thought, I think he could pro even provide some stuff for Ash and Go, and I know he shows up in an episode, but we'll, I'll talk about my problems with that if we ever get to that episode. Eventually. Notice, I said if. All right. So my first one? Go for it. So I picked the Frontier Brain Brandon. I think this could have been a really cool one for coming back with the Reggies. I have a, I have a Frontier Brain, and I'm glad you didn't pick him. Well, I think this would have been an, an awesome way for him to... Uh, Showed that he now has his his entire team is now Reggie's. He has the Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, and Reggie Steel still, but he's added Reggie Gigas, Reggie Alecki, and Reggie Draco to his team. Or even showing him catching them and then using them in his uh like a battle in the Ultra class for like the winner of this battle gets to go in and uh, challenge Raihan for the number eight spot kind of thing. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that. Especially considering as like as cathartic as it was when Ash finally beat him, it took him like three times to do it. So I feel like Ash would still be like, I'm not on Brandon's level if he if Ash is the one who he has to battle. Mm -hmm. Well heck, maybe somebody else who I feel like could potentially be on your list might end up battling Brandon, but over oh, I, I liked I liked him, even if I was a little scared of him as a kid. Yeah. There was such a competitive Thing between him and Ash, I mean, with him taking three, I, I, this is like the first time Ash took three times to beat someone. Yeah, because at least enough a battle of this kind of magnitude. Most of the time, Ash beats him in one or two times. So yeah, it's it would be an interesting one, and it would give Ash another kind of rivalry with someone in the Masters Eight if he got up to that level. Yeah. Not to mention, I feel like just Go himself, because based on Brandon and his goals, I feel like Go himself would be kind of inspired by that. That is quite true. Yeah, yeah. And in a way, this is kind of a sequel to characters we wanted to come back and didn't want to come back, primarily just because we did not know what we were undertaking, what journey, the hell Journeys was doing beforehand. Exactly. And these characters, again, are more likely to be in the mass or uh, the coronation series to get uh a chance to battle with the uh ash or even some of the other competitors exactly because it can't just be the ash show the whole time except for for some reason always seems to be <sighs> yeah so um <laughs> should, should we should we uh i co-sign so can i move on to my next one go right ahead okay you did a frontier brain so i'm gonna do mine Noland. Okay. Okay, for those of you who don't remember, Ash and Noland battle, it was Ash's Charizard versus Noland's Articuno. Well, okay. it didn't technically belong to Noland. He's just like, oh, no, it's just a friend of mine. I don't know, as one of the, as the first battle frontier brain Ash battled and one of the best battles they ever did that I sadly le erroneously left off my list when we did that video... I just think that I just think seeing him again and seeing just another rare, powerful Pokemon, I don't know, it could kind of reinforce Go's stance of, oh, oh, reconnecting with Pokemon rather than just catching them like they're gumballs mm. or something. Plus, I just like I said, his battle was just really good with Ash. So if I had to see eat a Frontier Brain come back and it wasn't just Brandon, Nolan would be cool too. Yeah, I really remember liking this one because this was the battle like Charizard comes back specifically for, and it's revealed, oh, it learned Overheat. It, yeah, uh, in... something like that. Yeah, so I can co-sign onto that one. I think that would be a very interesting battle to have. Um, I just... Would you want him to have, like, improved his connection with Articuno, whether he caught it or 
is he still just using it as like a friendly partner? I think friendly partner. I think friendly partner makes it a little more interesting. Like, plus, people get people, you tend to get sick of people who just randomly catch legendary Pokemon. Look, look, we literally did a review on an episode where Go catches a Suicune, and it wasn't always our favorite. That is very true. So my next one. Yeah, but you co-sign. Yeah, I co-sign. I, I remember really liking that battle. Yeah, go for it. it. So this is one that I, uh, I'm gonna use instead of because I had Wallace on my list as well. So I think this one would be a really interesting one to have come up, especially if it was like very early on in the series. Damien, Charmander's original trainer. I thought about doing it, but my inner my childhood wouldn't let me do it. So this would give Ash a chance to bring back some of his other Pokemon. I'm not saying to change his team. I'd like that he has had a focused team for this part. But have an episode, this is Charizard's episode, to come back for a battle. And so Bash finds out he's going to face Damien. He brings Charizard out and sweeps Damien's team with Charizard alone or something. That would, I think, could be really interesting and cathartic for Charizard to get that kind of win. Yeah, oh, oh, I would like to say all six Pokemon at the same time, but sure, that works too. <laughs> That could be interesting, but... So has he grown at all, or is he just the same piece of crap that we knew and grew to hate? I don't know. See, it... I could see it going either way. Um, one would be where he's still kind of the dick and doesn't treat Pokemon it well at all. And then Charizard sweeps him. Or it could be that he has learned his lesson ha and has grown having watched Ash and Charizard in so many battles on like TV where he didn't make it to the uh, competition. He's always like, he was two badges behind. So he didn't make the, uh, the Indigo league. Then didn't, then he tried out for the silver league and was like four badges behind and just couldn't, he never got there. He could never win enough badges to make it to the league. So he, eventually had a change of heart or something i i don't know i i tentatively co-signed i like in all seriousness a part of me is kind of like hmm do i want to see this character again um i don't know oh if it's written well enough i guess i'd be able to go for it but i don't i don't know I, i'm a, i'm hesitant but i'll tentatively co-sign okay I, I can understand that it, I said it kind of depends on I, I would agree. It would depend on how it's written. Yeah. Yeah. But do you want to know another character on my list? I remember we did the when we did the characters we didn't want back, you put you pulled a cop out and said and your last your last one was I don't want any character any companion rivals returning without said companions. I kind of rolled my eyes at that. But this is this time I think this one could work. Okay. Nando from Diamond and Pearl. Okay. Okay, I know he was Dawn's rival, but he was also technically Ash's rival because he decided I want to do both contests and the gym stuff. Honestly, I think he had a really cool battling style, and I, I don't know, I just think, uh, like, he could help everybody. Like, he could battle against Ash, he could help Chloe through some stuff, and, um, well, uh, Go. Go, Go has yeah. a lot. I can understand that. This one would be interesting because it would give... He would be able to interact with all the characters kind of equally. Do I... I mean, you may have to introduce him. Just throw him into one of like the episodes Dawn's already come in at or something. That way at least there's that connection. But as I said, I, I prefer if the main rival attached to the main or the main person the but main they person. but but they i don't know they both had mm -hmm. enough interactions with each other that i'm okay i'm okay if dawn's not in that same episode plus if nando wins he can sing songs for everybody and that was the best part of this character because <laughs> he was hilarious uh i just remember he's the one that carried the like harp right that's As well. him oh god yeah okay okay yeah i know i had I'll, I'll co-sign on to that one. I, I think that would be an interesting one to bring back. Heck, he could show up at the lab, play play like what, 
pluck one string and he's surrounded by all the Pokemon at the lab. And they all just turn on Ash and go and attack him when he says, well, they're my Pokemon now. I mean, he would ne- he would never do that. He ha- he has the heart of an angel. He- Nando's the one character who I feel like, I would save this man, I would save this man's life. Okay. Okay, so my next one? Go for it. So this one's very obvious to me. I've I've talked about how much I actually really like this character, and I'm sure you kind of have a feeling you know who it is. Lieutenant Surge. Okay, before you go on, can you explain why Lieutenant Surge is such a is such an inspiration for you? Because I don't feel like I've ever fully gotten an answer about it. I think early on, this was actually the first uh, gym leader that I actually saw. Um, I know when I first saw it, I saw like the first episode and then I missed like a couple things and I saw Lieutenant Surge. I know I missed most of Brock's battle. I know I I didn't see uh, Misty's battle till I rewatched the entire series, like when, uh, what was it? Um, Advanced Battle was uh, airing. I finally went back and rewatched the entire original series at that point, and that's when I saw her the Misty battle first, or Misty giving Ash the badge. But this one was a big moment because it's like Ash considers evolving Pikachu into Raichu. There's just a whole bunch of connections. But Ash... And, and this was kind of the start of the... Ash is actually in a battle and has a creative way of winning where it's actually a battle, not where he's cheating like with Brock. That That, that is fair. <laughs> what, what, so do you know what you want him specifically doing in Journeys? I was thinking that it would be... An episode probably it would have been in um this um ma- uh the yeah Pokemon Master Journeys so the second ha- or second part technically of the entire of this generation it would have given a chance for Ash to see uh Vizquez again I believe is how her name is pronounced the temporary gym leader for uh, Vermilion oh, right. City oh right her. And Ash is pretty much Ash's first opponent in the series. Um, and I think it would it'd be really cool to see Lieutenant Surge having gone back and relearned because um, the, the end of Ash and uh, Lieutenant Surge's battle, Ash wins because Pikachu's faster than Raichu and was trained to use fast moves where Raichu was just, Raichu knows thunder. So it'd be interesting to see Lieutenant Surge having kind of corrected that's the big lesson lieutenant surge learns is that there's stuff pikachu can learn before it evolves into raichu that he just ignored is he still 10 feet tall yes okay that, that's fine that that that's perfectly okay with me and i want one mention it's just like yeah yeah i taught raichu a lot of the tactics before i met you you a lot of the tactics tactics i learned in the war and we're like uh what you, you, c- c- come again and he's like I can't talk about it. <laughs> and that's I, just the end of that. They just ignore it after that. They just ignore, they just, there are so many unanswered questions. But yeah, I've grown to really have a fondness for Lieutenant Surge, no matter how, no matter how tall he grows, because like, did nobody think about that when they were designing him? He's, he was part of the super soldier program. Let's just say that. He, they ejected so, him with, um, I don't know, some uh, Machamp DNA or something. Oh, God. I, oh, g- g- goodness. I don't want to see him die, Gigantamax because he's he's scarier than most of them. He probably knows uh, more moves than most of the Pokemon anyway. That's terrifying. But I can co-sign. All right. Your next one? Sawyer. Okay. Honestly, uh, <sighs> This is kind of a tricky one because I really like Sawyer, but I don't think I love Sawyer. That being said, it still would be cool to see. Heck, I'd actually like it if in the Coronation series, maybe it's kind of early on, Sawyer's ahead of Ash. That would be interesting. Like he, like he's in the Great Class or the Ultra Class already when Ash first enters or something. Exactly. I just think it would be kind of cool just to see Sawyer. So- 
to see Sawyer. Maybe he's already studying the effects of Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. He, you don't have to change him a whole lot. I thought personality-wise, he was totally fine. I, I, mm -hmm. heck, maybe he and Go have a good dynamic with each other because they're both kind of studious and they both have to deal with Ash, who is, well, not studious. Mm -hmm. This would be an interesting one because it would give Ash an opponent that would be that do doesn't just use Dynamaxing because Ash is from what I remember is the has anyone else used Mega Evolution in the tournament? I oh yes, yes, never mind. I, I mean, I I don't even know. I don't even know. By that logic, maybe some Alo we could have thrown in some Alola characters into this. Yeah, I... but I, but I do have one, so it kind of works. Okay, but yeah, um, I can understand Sawyer. It would be an interesting one, especially as you said, if he was higher ranked, because I mean, he was first learning how to be a trainer pretty much when Ash met him. Yeah, I guess I just figured because Ash starts off kind of slow, so maybe it could motivate him being like, "Oh, I have to step it up." Heck, maybe Sawyer could be. Maybe Sawyer deep down could be thinking he's kind of different from the last time I saw him, and he could say. Did you get a haircut? Uh, and that's just the only thing we we talk about for the uh, animation. It's just that Sawyer's new gimmick. He's trying to figure out what's different about Ash, and he keeps commenting on different ways the, of the animation's different. Oh God, Work, works works for me. Yeah, he needs something new now that he's not been a main character in I don't know half a decade. Something like that. It was the sixth anniversary of XY, so it's been it's been a minute for him. No, but I'll co-sign. I I liked him and getting to see Mega Septile again would be kind of cool. Yeah. It's not Mega Swampert, but nobody has that apparently. Wasn't it in one of the Mega specials? Or am I, I thinking I, of something? I don't even I don't even think so. Oh, I think that I think they just hate me, but We'll talk about how Pokemon hates me another day. Maybe that's another video. All right. But my next one? Go for it. So you picked a friendly rival. I'll pick a friendly rival. I'm going to go with Richie, the original friendly rival. Okay. Now, I'm from my understanding, he does appear in a scene like watching Ash, but I think that's all I've heard that he actually does in the entire thing. So... That's really disappointing. This would be a really cool one to, I don't know, just give him a chance to come back because he had all his nicknamed Pokemon and he was always like Ash, but one step ahead, it seemed like. But likable. Yeah. Like, I've nicknamed all my Pokemon. My a Pokemon, I've marked all my Pokeballs so I know which ones are mine when they go back and catch the, or free them from Team Rocket. That, that, yeah, I mean, I want to give him credit because that's a smart idea, but then again, and people generally know what Pokeballs have what in them, so. Mm -hmm. But I think that it would be really cool if, I, I don't know, I don't think Richie would make it to the Masters 8, but I think maybe one of Ash's Ultra Class battles could have been this, or even them both being in a turn, like, this is the ultra tournament and they both enter and just don't face each other in the tournament. And it'd be just something interesting to see Richie and get to see Zippo and Sparky and all those, all of his nicknames Pokemon. We need Pikachu versus Pikachu. That would be interesting. I don't know if I want it. As I said, I don't know if I wanted it like them to be facing the tournament, but maybe like they both, Make it to the semifinals. Richie loses. Ash wins the whole tournament. Then they just face off against each other in like a fun battle at the end. Would you want him to get? Like, I, I, I'm I, first of all, I co-sign with that. But honestly, I think it'd be kind of cool if if his Pikachu had Dynamaxing. Thing it has the Pikachu form, but it still has the little mm. weird haircut thing. Kind of making it unique. Yeah, that would be kind of cool and. I don't know. Richie's one of those characters that I really wish had appeared more as the series went on. I think the last time we saw him was where he got hit. He was a, an important part of the story was his own Pokemon Chronicles episode. 
Oh, he was in like a good chunk of that. Yeah. But that was still back during uh, the Ruby Sapphire and Emerald days, so. You're telling me. But yeah, I, I can I can definitely co-sign. I like I feel like everybody kind of likes Richie. Yeah, he as I said, he was a especially at that point in the series, he was a competent version of Ash. He shows up and he's like, I'm still better. And I'm like, yeah, that, that seems that seems fair. Okay. <laughs> since we both kind of have it's like the Naruto list we did. We both kind of have a lot of people on our list. Just to <laughs> be let's just do honorable mentions. Okay. All right, I knew this character wasn't going to be on your list. This Mirror B. Okay. All right, that you 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 hesitated <sighs> for a second. That kind of startled me. Well, I wasn't expecting it because I didn't consider game characters very much. I mean, you, you, if I picked a game character, you knew who I was going to pick. But I decided oh, yeah. with with Mirror B. <laughs> Frankly. You don't even have to do the Shadow Pokemon arc as much as I would love that. But honestly, he's just a goofy villain and who doesn't really undergo change, but I don't really think he needed to. I just think he could have a very funny battle with Ash and pr sadly probably end up losing. But I, I just, <laughs> I like Mirror B. He had, he had some hilarious moments and he, they, they could do an anime version of his battle theme and it would be amazing. Yeah, that would be awesome, and seeing a dance team again would be kind of cool. We haven't seen one since Tierno, really, and this time it would be really, like, a, like the Pokemon are designed to be dancing anyway, so, because that's what yeah. his team was. Yeah, I, I mean, I did also think about Tierno for that exact reason, but I'm like, eh, Mirabee's a little more interesting. I love you, Tierno, but Mirabee's a little more interesting for this list. And he's kind of the perfect character from the uh, Coliseum and XD, XD Gale of Darkness games because he would fit in the uh, Pokemon world, like the Pokemon animated world. It'd be a nice hint for those that know who he is, but he'd be a unique character that those who may not know him, okay, you don't know him, but he'd be kind of a cool character to see. Yes, and then they announced, hey, uh, we're remaking these things for the Switch, so um, go crazy. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. I, I I was actually thinking the exact same thing the other day. I was like, ooh, I want to play those games, but I don't want to spend $150,000 on a game. I, I, I got Coliseum a few months ago. It cost me about $40. I'm like, huh, that's kind of a steal. There's a chance it's a reproduction. It's not. Oh, wow. So some people sell stuff without knowing really how much value it has. But Mirror B, he's entertaining, he's awesome, and if we can get one nod to XD Gale of Darkness and we can't use the playable characters, I'd still be happy with it. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll co-sign up to that. That would be either a great way to, re, uh, to introduce him to the anime and kind of be a nice hint, as I said, or announce that they're remaking the games, which would be amazing as well. Yeah. Yeah, basically that. All right. My first honorable mention? Go for it. It's uh, Harrison from the uh, Johto, the end of Johto. Okay. This, of all of the rivals of Ash, he's gotten like the least screen time. He's in like five episodes. That doesn't, that, that, <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that doesn't sound like that makes, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, he's just, he was Ash's kind of, okay, we need someone who Ash now knows and who he can lose to in the tournament and who could introduce us to the next generation pretty much was the whole mentality of Harrison's creation because he introduced Blaziken as the first uh, Pokemon revealed for, in the anime for uh, Diamond Pearl, or Ruby and Sapphire. It would be this would be kind of a cool one to come back just for a uh, chance to say, well, now he's got Mega Evolution has Mega Blaziken, and I don't know, throw him in like the Great Class or something. It's because he never had a set goal, so maybe give him this would give him a chance to actually get an actual goal. Besides, I just want to keep going on and battling and befriending Pokemon. I think if I remember correctly, was his main goal. 
Did you did you find yourself loving Harrison? I really enjoyed him. I because he seemed like um someone who's a little bit more experienced than Ash because he he was like I don't know fourteen or something. He was I I would put him maybe about Brock's age, maybe a little older than that originally. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I find that the more and more research I do, a lot of PokeTubers really, a select group of them really like Harrison. And I go back and I watch them, I'm like, I think he's kind of cool, but I, I, I don't know. He's kind of weird to me. Okay. Or you just... I, I, no, no. Once, sometimes you just feel certain ways and you don't really have an idea of why. Okay, I can understand that. Yeah, there isn't... Yeah, he's almost overly friendly, so... Which I will admit is kind of why I put him as an honorable mention. I liked him because he's kind of the end of the generation that I started playing a lot, is where he's introduced and all that. So I'm... I really enjoy him, but I can understand why people might be off point a little bit if he, he is a little over friendly. I admit, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's because every time I rewatch his stuff, I'm like, I don't remember any of this. I remember his and Ash's battle, and I remember the episode he's introduced is about the uh, Sneasel and the Moltres flame that they use. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, it's like guarding the Moltres flame and attacking anyone who comes near it for some reason. Basically, yeah. I'm a, I can co-sign on to that. All right, your next honorable mention. All right, I got a lot more honorable mentions because I figured we would take each other's a lot of our spots, which I don't feel like we have, but I'm going to say <laughs> Morrison. Okay. All right, look, I know you're not the biggest fan of Morrison, but at the same time, my philosophy was always he's for journeys. Instead of always giving time to characters that we know and love, like we've, see, we've seen Dawn, we've seen Serena, et cetera, et cetera, how about we give some time to the characters who didn't get the most spotlight? And I kind of feel like Morrison would be perfect for that. Not to mention, it could be a great callback to how Ash used to be. He, he's not really all that impulsive and reckless anymore. Or, mm -hmm. But back when Morrison was around, Morrison kind of brought out that chaotic energy of him. Plus, the, the, their random competitions with each other, which I found to be pretty funny. So, I don't know. I just think Morrison would be a really good bit. Yeah, as I think I've said before, I think my problem with him was that he was introduced so late and was expected to be the main rival for Ash at this point. It's like, like the, diff the difference between him and Harrison is that Yes, Harrison's introduced as a friendly rival last minute, but so was Richie a season before, or I guess four seasons before. But you still had Gary, who was Ash's main rival at this point. So there was someone who had, and Gary didn't have the most development, but he was, for, a better, or for not knowing a better term off the top of my head, a dick to Ash at that point. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say jerk, but this, it's our channel. We can say whatever we want. Yeah. So... Yeah, as I said, my main issue was I, I wish he had been introduced more. So, yeah, if he had had more screen time, I think I would have liked him more. So, uh, so, I, I, so basically, it had he got introduced within the first, I don't want to say few episodes, but a lot earlier, maybe things could have worked out. Yeah, and having those little competitions every so often that aren't Pokemon battles between, it's like, we're having... We're rivals in everything but Pokemon battles until they get to the tournament. And that's like their first battle is actually at the Pokemon League instead of it, it's like they've had pie eating contests and race through the woods and oh we're gonna I'm gonna do the trick house before you or something. I was about to say, man, man, I feel like whenever we talk about series, the advanced generation is always the series that we seem to want to add stuff up to. It's weird like that. It, it's kind of the most complete generation when it comes to the series, I think, except for the rival. That's like the one thing that really needed to work on for Ash. Hmm. I, I'm. We're we're gonna have to do another video about that, aren't we? Probably. Yeah, but if you want to watch the first draft, it's up. The, I don't. I don't. I don't know where to point it. I don't know where to point anymore because just any anywhere. But honestly, yeah. Plus, I th I just think I found Morrison to be oddly hilarious. The one kind of problem for me with re-watching the series is I noticed Morrison 
I felt like the more and more he interacted with Brock, Brock got more and more annoyed with him. I don't know why I have that vibe. It was like, Morrison, you have to register. But Morrison, you need to get all the badges. Like, I don't know. Brock seemed like he really didn't like Morrison towards the end. That's quite possible. It's just like, I already deal with Ash. I already had to tell him to do all this same stuff. I'm not telling another person to have it. They have to do this. Oh, oh poor Brock. <laughs> poor Brock. <laughs> but yeah, Morrison, I think he's a fantastic rival. No, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see him. Yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll co-sign. I, I think if given more screen time, I might come to like him a bit more, but I uh, just, again, I, I wish he had had more screen time as the main rival. Man, man you, and you used to you used to openly say how terrible you thought he was, but you're not the only one. You're not the only one who has Pokemon characters you don't like. Yeah. All right, so my next one. Go for it. So this one... Is kind of is one I've combined five together specifically because they're five kind of interrelated ones, and that's the five Galar gym leaders that have not been shown in this anime at all: Milo, Nessa, Kabu, Gordy, and Melanie. At least all the other gym leaders have at least been shown or been interacted with. So, not much, unless you're B. And then you're, uh, then you have like what five episodes now? Something like that. But I like her. Yeah, but I mean, spoiler alert for those who haven't watched the most recent part yet. Five, four, three, two, one. We've seen Alistair now. Um, we've seen uh, God, what's her name? Uh, Pearl. We've, and we know Raihan. Uh, has been shown at least once already, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be interacted with. So wait, who the hell is Pearl? Isn't that um, or is that not her name? I God, I can't remember her name now. I don't know uh, who you're talking about. The old lady. That oh, we've had uh, two episodes with Opal. Opal. That's why I knew it was I'm, some sort of stone. I was or about something. to say Pearl is Barry from the manga, and we haven't seen him either. But well, he's we know he's on both of our lists. So yeah, yeah, why not? He would have been better. Like, imagine if he'd been uh, in, like, the, uh, let's say the second one of Dawn's set of episodes, where he's just running around going crazy. Yeah, and then, then he meets his manga counterpart, and his manga counterpart's like, dude, slow down. Because, like I said, his manga counterpart is the straight man, and it's kind of weird. Because every other inter- incarnation of him is not the straight man? Yep. Uh, but anyway, I agree with the Galar stuff. Particularly, I say Nessa, because she and Sonya were really good friends, and I feel like we haven't seen that much of Sonya. Yeah, it's... These would have been nice to be introduced as, like, almost like gatekeepers for getting promotions in the cl- different classes. So have, like, Milo and Nessa be the like the last two people ash battles for a chance to move up to the great class or something and then uh kabu gordy and melanie being in like a tournament in the great class for ash to get up towards the t- high end of that or into uh ultra class could have been kind of cool yeah i i can agree with that i kind of feel, i feel like if we ever do a rewrite we just have to say just galar just just let's just throw everybody from galar in there here from from prominent characters like Bead and Marnie to the Wulu that breaks the fence open in the first part of the game. Specifically that Wulu. Yeah, so... And if you're wondering why other characters weren't listed that were uh, gym leaders or something, I just went with the main gym leaders and I I could have included the... Uh, God, what are they? The semi-pro gym leaders as well in this, but they're not as big of an importance. From the... Um, Isle of Armor DLC. Uh, oh, so... Oh, no, I liked I liked them, though. But yeah, I can I can understand that. Uh, uh, these are the ones that I felt needed to be in. The other two would have been a nice add-on. But these are the five that I feel absolutely should have been included. Yeah, and I can co-sign. I just didn't put them on my list specifically because I didn't want to be a broken record. I know, but we keep repeating ourselves anyway, and we're going to continue to do so until they actually make the changes we want. Uh, it's not really possible, because Journey says, like, what, four episodes left? That is very true. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so my last character, or sorry, my honorable mention. Go right ahead. Trip. Okay. Uh, 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 part part of me kind of just feels like we're friends with Poke for Lax now. We have to mention Trip in some regard. But in all seriousness, he has strategy in a lot of his battles. Mm-hmm. And considering one of the common complaints about journeys is that sometimes the battles feel a little too quickly or just quote unquote plot armor. Sometimes it exists, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I feel like Trip could kind of reaffirm Ash's stance of, hey, Maybe you need an actual strategy going into it and that sort of thing. I can co sign on to this. Um, as I said, I've having now actually watched all of it, is Trip the worst I've ever seen? No. I still don't think he's Ash's best rival, but I think he's definitely different enough that he could be included. Yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of just feel like, especially with his passion for wanting to beat Alder and that sort of thing, I kind of feel like him showing not showing up at all, well, with the exception of like a tiny cameo, I don't know, I feel like that kind of hurts his character, that we're just like, oh, there he is. What, what are we doing? So do you think, I don't know, should we have um, Alder be in the, like, Masters 8 himself, or... I know he's already, at this point in the series, he's been replaced by Iris as champion, but should he have been uh, in the Masters he's like, okay, I just retired, she took my place, kind of thing instead. Maybe that sort of thing. Heck, maybe we get Iris versus, maybe we get Iris versus Trip after, like, he's challenging her for the title, like, like, okay, um, I'm gonna go after, you be Alder, so I'm coming after you. Maybe something like that. That could be interesting, and, uh, if that w- this would give Iris a chance to shine in a series that she's shown up like twice now in, and trust me, I ha- <laughs> I have an idea for that, but that's another video for another day. Oh, uh, okay. but yeah, but no, yeah. Co- trip trip ma- mainly just tri- trip. I I don't know. I've always I always kind of liked trip, even when no one else did. As I said, that having now seen the entire series and seen him grow and change. I'll co-sign, I, I like him more than I did when I only saw the first few episodes, because if you only see the first few episodes, you're not getting his full story, which really well, is... Well, that's the, isn't that the case for almost every anime character? Yeah, but there's not even, like, a hint of why he's doing anything until, like, halfway through the series, so... Yeah, I, all I know is you like Trick more than you like Burgundy. Well, that's very true, and that's not hard. No, no, it's not. You might like me more than you like Burgundy. That's saying quite a bit. Yeah, I, you know how you have that one thing in your closet that I sent? She's yeah. got like 10. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, mm. that makes me sad. That makes me very sad. But yeah, trip. As I said, I'll co-sign on this time. Alrighty. Alright, so I picked someone from the Elite Four that Ash has only met, I think, once or twice in total time for my last honorable mention, and that's Bruno. Okay. So, this was one... The main reason I picked him is because he... I had the VHS tape where it's, um... Ash right after he gets back to Pallet Town. It includes, um... I think it was back when they were, like, three episodes. So it had this episode, the episode where they're filming a movie, and then the episode with Meowth's backstory were all on one tape. They they find a lot of movie sets to just casually end up on. Yeah. Um. So, but I really enjoyed this story, and I would like to see Bruno being. I don't think I'd want him to battle Ash, but I kind of want um him to show up as like he was in the Masters Eight or something, and like him having a battle with one of the other ones, and maybe getting knocked out of the Masters Eight or down a, a rank or two in there. And be a nice, like, ooh, is he going to still be in the Masters 8 when we get to it? Or, like, a back and forth, we could get a few extra characters that ha- are considered in that top tier. They were a Masters 8 level trainer, or are a Masters 8 level trainer. It's just, like, they may not be there still when they get there kind of thing. Yeah, I could see that. Honestly, Bruno's not really a character I remember a whole lot about. Like, I had to look up some stuff, like, who is this? Oh, him! Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I know. I, I kind of know him. So let, it kind of falls in line with the, we haven't seen much of this character, so let's bring them back. 
Exactly. And I liked how he was able to figure out what was wrong with the onyx. And it was a sand slash in between two of its rocks. It would be kind of cool, like, because he, he seemed to have some sort of connection with Pokemon that was never really explained well. Maybe it's Aura because he's a fighting type gym leader or a fighting be, type trainer. So that would be really cool. So just getting a bit more time with Bruno, as I said, him being able to like figure out what's wrong with a Pokemon after a battle or something as well would be kind of nice. Heck, we could get a cameo of him in the Magikarp episode where it shows off Ash and Go being super jacked. And he's like, ha, that's <laughs> cute. He brings out his magic carp and it's like three times. It, it looks like Team Rocket sub just oh, in oh size. God. That was a bizarre episode. Uh, yes, yes, it was. But it wasn't boring. And sometimes that's the best you can get. Yep. But yeah, I can agree with Bruno. It's not a character I would have expected on your list, but I still, I still, the little I remember about him, I remember liking him. As I said, I. I picked him because I, I mean, it was one of the VH, VHS tapes I had, so I kept seeing it over and over again. I remember you saying another character on your VHS tapes, and I'm glad I, he better not be on your list. <laughs> uh, I wish I still had that because that was that's actually worth a ton of money now. No, it's not considering who, the character we're talking about. No, you would have to pay somebody to take that off. Nope, don't want to get well, into it. I think then we're talking about. We may be talking about two different tapes, but okay. Because I had I had like five. Oh, that one. Never mind. I know which one you're talking about now, but I'm no, I'm talking about I had I had a band episode on a VHS tape. I'm not kidding. Uh was it the one where they go to the beach? No, I had the one where they got uh what, they met Santa Claus. Please we we need to watch that episode together because I've never seen that episode. I don't have it anymore. I think I I think I sold it at a garage sale when I was like a kid, when I was getting out of Pokemon, and now I regret it because that I'm pretty sure that episode because it's banned is uh, very expensive if you have a copy of it. So I really regret selling it. You were not a smart child, but you were probably smarter than me, so it works out. <sighs> all right, but you, all right, you ready for final ones? Final ones, unless we really want to keep going, but uh, but I'll just say my pretty much my last one. Okay. Guzma. Okay. I just kind of felt like Guzma was a character, like he, like when I, I was falling out of love with Pokemon Sun and Moon, it was not going well for me. Then Guzma showed up and he had one of the best introductory episodes where he pretty much stole the whole thing and kind of made everybody realize, ev the gang realize, yeah, we have to step it up because we can't let them win. Not sure why. They Guzman Team Skull seem like a delight to me. I would let them win. But regardless, I just think his rambunctious attitude, like look, look, not a lot of people were fans of the humor of Sun and Moon, myself included. But I feel like he was a one one, he was consistently funny, and two, he would kind of work with Journey's style. I I just think he would be really cool. Yeah, that would be an interesting one and Imagine he shows up and he has a battle with Marnie. So it's Team Skull cheering on Guzma versus Team Yell cheering on Marnie. I would be cool with that. Honestly, I was gonna I was gonna say through some shenanigans. I don't know how it happened, but Chloe temporarily ends up joining Team Skull. <laughs> She's uh, trying to get um I don't know. God, I don't know which types she hasn't seen if she hasn't or if she's seen all the types of Eevee yet. I don't know. I I, I don't know. Maybe she's like, oh, a, po a poison type. It's just like, uh, yeah, that that's not real. But you want to hang? Hang? <laughs> it, come on, come on, spit some rhymes with us, and we can hear a really awful Chloe rap because it probably wouldn't be good. Ah, uh, there is some stuff we'll have to talk about eventually, probably. Yeah, or or better or better yet, it's actually a really good rap, and we're like. Stay with them. She ends up becoming the best uh, female rapper in the world. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And you remember Plumier, or I don't know how you pronounce her name. Yeah, like, the, the, like, she's considered the admin of the Team Skull, right? Yeah, yeah. But maybe, maybe Chloe has interactions with her. Story-wise, would it make a lot of sense? No, but I'm trying to add something to Chloe to make her funny, entertain something. Yeah, I I could see that. It would be... It, I don't know. 
there's Chloe is such a wasted character, unfortunately. Like I wish they had done something so much earlier. The E V episode should have been much earlier and there should have been more connection to the rest of the E V Lucians that we've seen. I have uh, uh, you seemed very sad to talk about an upcoming episode of her so I so I can't wait for that. <sighs> well it's not just that there there's a different episode. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I, have you I, seen I probably have it and I I'm kind of going through I'm kind of going through it kind of slowly because I don't want to go back and rewatch it like I did last time I, when it took us like a month and a half to do it. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we are planning to do at least the first part. We want to get it We're hoping to get it done next week, right? Sure, unless something happens to one of us. <laughs> so we're trying to get it done before we have um, the end of uh, Ash and Leon and pretty much the end of the series. So. Which, ba based on what I've heard, we're probably not going to get it done by then. Yeah. Maybe but we I, will, but it'll be close. Anyways, but Guzma, I just think Guzma was cool. And plus he, plus Z moves. So, because I feel like Z, mm -hmm. he could be like, hey, um, are you keeping up with Z moves? Because I've been, so, square up. Yeah, that's been, I mean, we saw Z, we saw um, Yahweh use a Z move, I think, but he's not in the tournament as far as I remember, so. Not as far as I know. And then there were the, um, oh god, what were their names from the one race episode, um, where they were racing across the Alolan Island. With the All Out Brothers? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, none of the. I don't think any of them were there. I think it focused more on Team Rocket reuniting with their Pokemon. Yeah, but the All Out Brothers, I think those are the only ones besides Ash who have used Z moves. So it's like, okay, we need someone in the tournament who's going to use Z moves because we've got a couple people who use Mega. We have a couple people who use uh, Dynamax and Gigantamax. Z moves were the big gimmick in Gen 7, so we should get at least some love in the series, but I know it's not liked as much as uh, the Dynamaxing and stuff and the... Uh... Well, based on that logic, Dynamaxing should get more or did more love in the series, and it um, hasn't. That is true. Uh, but yeah, no, Guzma would be an interesting one, and a good way of having someone who's pretty strong in the series, or in the tournament and giving out Z moves is his way of battling. Yeah. I, I like our idea of Team Skull versus Team Yell and Chloe joining Team Skull. That was a random one, but I'm on board with it. I you know what that that could make a fun uh thing where she, she joins Team Skull and Go joins Team Yell. Oh god. <laughs> and Ash is kind of like, do I have to be the smart one here? I'm not used to this. And Ash is just pissed at both of them because he he doesn't like Team Skull and he doesn't like Team Yell because they of all the th stuff. It's just like okay, I'm I'm just gonna sit here and cheer both of them on. Yeah, and then and then Ren and Krissa are the, like Ren's like Team Skull. They're so charismatic, and Chris is like, uh, no, Team Yell. They'll support the Gala region, and then they both just get into a fight about it. Exactly, because it's something they would do. But I, I said I'll co-sign on the Guzma. I like the idea. Yeah, I love Guzma, but who's your last-ish character? So, this one is one that I thought, and I've heard a lot about uh, other people wanting it as well, and that's Sabrina, the gym leader, coming back. I heavily considered putting her on my list. So, this is one of the darkest actual storylines in Pokemon, at least at the start, because she's... Sabrina's a psychic who pretty much turned Brock and Misty into dolls. Um, and her and, parents, too. Oh, yeah, and uh, if you lose to her, she does it to you as well. Um, she's pretty much at that point considered like an unbeatable trainer. So she's like she's the first one of like ten people who've been called like unbeatable in the series. Yeah, that doesn't uh, well. To act, technically, she's kind of still undefeated based on all we know. That's true because Ash won by making her laugh with Haunter. I'm telling you, they relied on that way too much in the first series. Yeah, so I'm trying to think. Ash won what? three battles in the entire yeah huh? and like i said it doesn't make him look good it made lieutenant surge and everybody else look worse because they lost to somebody who's like <sighs> didn't ha really have any badges but sabrina's one that it would be nice to see because pretty much she's starting to 
I don't know, recover, become a more stable person at the end of her episodes. So it'd be nice to see like her actually having to battle people and while she still has her psychic powers, she doesn't necessarily turn people into dolls as soon as they lose. Heck, maybe she uses her psychic powers for good at some point. I don't know specifically how, but may, may, <laughs> maybe something. They could figure it out. Yeah, and it'd be cool to see like uh, Ash's Gengar is like, oh, by the way, I got your evolved form, Haunter. I, yeah. I feel like it would be a case of people thinking, oh man, are, is there going to be some jealousy between Ash's old Haunter and his current Gengar? But they would immediately be best friends. Mm -hmm. They they just start uh, freaking everybody out, and pranking people. I remember at that Haunter pulled out the bomb at one point. I'm like, um, it, look, I don't like what she did either, but th this is a step too far. Oh, she's fine. That and this could also if if this was like the end of the series, then we could also get that Ash actually just died from uh, when he left his body in the one episode, and it's just like it's been Ash's dying spirit. Oh God. The abridged series made that episode so much crazier because instead of her like recovering, she's immediately like, oh, that was just a distraction. But tell you what, give me this haunter and I'll give you a badge. Really? Well, you're just going to keep coming back. You're basically like a parasite. And he's like, thank you. He's... It, it, was, it, was a great, it was a great series and I miss it. Yeah, but this is one of those that would be interesting. And as I said, she's supposed to be considered one of the strongest uh, trainers with like her Abra being able to beat like fully evolved Pokemon and stuff. So it'd be, I think that it evolves into Kadabra during one of the battles or something. So yeah, it'd be an interesting one with her having a full team or something going all out. Heck, like we talked about with Tien in Dragon Ball, all super, maybe she still has a psychic gym where she's like having people learn to control psychic abilities, but it's not like forceful. She's like, she, she's a noticeably patient and a lot kinder. Mm -hmm. Maybe they encounter some trouble and they, she does show she can still be scary because that was kind of the appeal of her character. Like, she gets really mad so they were like, oh, that's what you meant, Ash. Um, I'm going to be over here. H have fun in this one. I'd be, like, maybe have her and uh, run into Go and Go's trying to catch an Abra or something and uh, it's one that she's like rescued recently and she freaks out and turns him into a doll. Oh god. Oh god. And he, Everyone's like, I got to, you got turned into a doll. How was it? He's like, actually, wasn't all that bad. It was actually kind of comfy. Then it's just like she runs into Ash and Ash is like, oh, oh, that's my friend. Can you turn him back? Fine. But and, no, I, I like Sabrina. You know, I I don't know if she would have a specific gimmick, though. I, I don't, cause, especially since we've already seen Mega Alakazam. Because at this point, her Kadabra must have evolved. Otherwise, like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah, I, I'd put her maybe in the Ultra class or the Great class. And just, I wouldn't have her be an early on person Ash would face. Or, uh, I don't know, maybe she's part of Team Mew or something as well it could be interesting. And, oh, Project uh, Mew. Project Mew. And uh, she's like, she assigns them to go oh, after like there's a cadet or a Alakazam in the woods that's going uh, berserk and it's and Team Mew's got to deal with it or something. Yeah, something like that. Project Mew. I, I don't think we can do a video on characters we would have liked in Project Mew. It'd be probably sit very similar to this list. I, mm, Maybe uh, you, there's a few research people that may get on the list instead, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe we could do it, but I'm not sure. But yeah, I like Sabrina as terrified as I was of her, <laughs> as I was of her, and one of Ash's most iconic lines of her dad finding all these pictures. Like you have all these pictures of her as a kid, that must make you a photographer. And I'm like, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. And people are going to jump on me like, well, maybe a there are people I know who say, well, I think Ash pretends to be dumb. I'm like, there's no pretending. Thing. I love Ash, but I'm allowed to call him out for being dumb because he's dumb. That is very true. Yeah, but I like Sabrina, so I can co-sign on to that. All right. Do we have any more that we 
just want to like offhand mention do could have been have, in this. Do you have any? Uh, we mentioned Barry. Barry would be kind of a fun one to have been in this tournament. He has almost the right energy for the series. Yeah. I feel like he and Go would be like best friends and maybe Ash would be like, hey, I thought we, we were, I don't know. That could be interesting. There's also Tobias being how strong he was, but <laughs> I, I put him on as like a backup and it's like, okay. He's... I feel like you would say that just to mess with our fan base. Yeah. He'd still, he, he'd sweep the tournament in the end and in, uh, with only two Pokemon once again. He's trained that team and that only that team since he finished, he won the championship. Good lord. I mean, I thought of saying Tyson for him and his Meow because I really like them. That would be an interesting one. Make yeah, a good I, Team Rocket episode. Yeah. Also, Bianca because I, I, I like because Bianca was cool. Even if she was involved in one of the worst episodes of Pokemon of all time, but that's another list for another day. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, other than that, there weren't that many more trainers that I was like, "Ooh, they really should be in an episode here." Yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm proud of myself because we didn't. Say, I feel like we didn't say too many obvious answers, especially people like, "Well, um, I figured you would have said Ethan or Brendan." I'm like, mm, "No, not not this time, not this time." Plus, we would have had to write them losing, and that would have physically hurt Richard. Mm -hmm. But I think that's it. I think that's everybody on my list. Yep, same for me. All right, should we close out? All right, so ladies, gentlemen, and others, what Pokemon characters would you have liked to have seen in the Coronation series? Whether it's a game character, an anime character you miss, and it may be a character you hate just so they can lose and you can laugh at them, because I, I respect that type of energy. Of course. And do you want us to try to do a Project Mew? Because that list might be a little bit harder to create, but we can it, try it. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I think I could do it, but we would also have to talk about, we'd also have to make sure we didn't have too much crossover, and sadly, I, I just... I don't know if we can do that. Yeah, is there really enough characters that are research-focused in Pokemon that wouldn't be able to create a whole list of this? Because I've got two ideas for two people, but they're two kind of obvious ones, I think, so... Yeah, but we'll see. Also, I never did this at the beginning, but I wanted to give a little bit of a shout-out to Espy. Some of you might know him, he does the Loafing Around podcast, and he's kind of the person who gave me the idea for this, because I remember he had, he was having people on, it's like, oh, I'd like to have had this person in the Masters 8. Hey, his Loafing Around podcast, it's really good, and I, I listened to it a good amount, so, I don't know, I don't know, he did, I, I like the idea that he gave, so thank you for that, even if you might not even know that he did it, though. Eh, maybe someone will post it for him. Yeah, may, maybe I'll tag him and say, hey, um... I, I did it. I kind of took this from you, and I I left out a character you said you wanted. So, um, sorry about that. Oh, but anyways, yeah. be sure to smash, stack, and pin the like, comment, and subscribe button. Give us a rating on your favorite podcast app, and we will see you next time. This has been Alex and Richard, and you have been listening to the Anime Egotists. Good night. Peace, easy.